Yeah, we've, uh, you know, we, we say that there have been 350,000 people, with, uh, soldiers in active duty, Marines, Air Force, um, Navy, who were exposed to concussion, uh, and that of those, we say about 35% have headaches uh, as a result or in association with it. Interestingly, because people who have been deployed are also showing a very high rate. So from the scientific point of view, the soldiers that I've been seeing may have other influences besides just concussion. But certainly, I think from the, the point of view of what the average citizen is hearing, I think the um, tension is that the focus is on post-traumatic stress disorder, but obviously here at the American Headache Society, our focus is going to be about what is the implications of headaches. So that's kind of the kind of work that I've done since I've been working in the Army at Fort Bragg and with the Defense and Veterans Brain Injury Centers, which is really dedicated to concussion work. And they have found the prominence of headache as a persistent symptom being very difficult because there are therapies, as we're learning, from sports, where in concussion you can do different therapies for some of the associated symptoms of long-term persistent concussive symptoms or post-concussive symptoms, but headache is persistent. And so it really blends so nicely with what we're doing here in terms of new drug therapies. So it's another population, and I think uh, because of the position of the wars, in, we say that 1% of the population fought the wars, and that 70 to 80 percent of those will come from military families. So it may also be that this is a group of people that we think of as different, but actually most of what I'm seeing I can do as we've done with our work and research is really try and bring it back to headache. So migraine, the other primary headaches like cluster headache, and try and decide how we're going to treat them because we may end up treating them as Dr. Dodik, who was our president at the time, as we all move towards post-traumatic headache, that we are uniquely positioned as people who take care of chronic migraine to take care of people with headache, especially soldiers, where there's dizziness and nausea and light sensitivity. The study that we did was based on 95 soldiers that I saw in the very first year that I went down there in 2008. And the reason it was an important time was because that was during the surge and at the change of the leadership in the White House. But they were consistent in trying to push the number of troops into Iraq and Afghanistan. So there were a lot of blast injuries. And that was what was interesting to me when I was still at the university in um, Chapel Hill, that there were... Uh, it's, different kind of concussion. You don't get knocked over by a blast. You can, but people, when they receive a, an IED, even if they're in a Humvee, they may just feel something like, uh, like a rock concert standing in front of the speaker. So that led me to try to understand in a population we do not see in headache medicine, young males, what kind of headaches were they describing to me, which was our first study that we just published recently, um, trying to see if we could give them a diagnosis instead of just calling it post-traumatic headache. And then this study was the outcome study to say, what is it that's going to determine whether a person is a, can remain in active duty? Because in the Army, if you can't be deployed and if you can't go to the fight, then it's not that you're a waste, but you're holding a place for somebody else who might be more able. So we found that three quarters of our soldiers out of the 95 did not continue in service. And the determinants of that were interesting for me as a headache specialist. A continuous headache, which is all over the head, in a person who has had headaches in the past. And most interesting, um, which we didn't suspect, is that we, we offered them a choice of what do you do when you have a headache? Do you keep going? Do you have to lie down? Or do you take medicine and keep going and keep doing so, like our civilians? taking their medicine and getting to work. And that's what we found. We found that people who tend to have a history of headache, a continuous headache, a big head headache, um, and who take medicine do worst. But the continuous headache, a 24-7 nonstop headache, m put a person at four-time risk for not being able to continue in service. So that, I think, is the service that we're doing. And hopefully, this will translate into both civilians and into military to help the patient make some important decisions, whether it's disability, whether it's continuation in service, and also to help officers and leaders in the field to help determine where we should spend our resources. Because maybe that person who's deployed two years ago and 
had, took several IEDs or who had other injuries. Parachute jumps at Fort Bragg because we have the 82nd Airborne and they jump out of planes a lot and they hit the ground hard. Um, maybe we are wasting their time and our time and money in some ways um, by having the expectation that they're just going to miraculously get better. Talking to your patient, whether they're in military service or whether they're in a headache clinic or whether you're a generalist, and ask important questions about what is the headache doing to you? We know that from other studies. And is it all the time? I think that for me the take home message is a continuous headache in a person may be telling us something about them. And so that was the interesting thing about the medication piece, is that it may be that people who had headaches in the past uh, and it's only about 10% of the people that we saw had headaches in the past, but they learned something. And it may not have been the, the right thing, but it may have been the human thing, which is, I need to keep going, I'm gonna take medicine, and that's what's gonna determine whether I can do my job, but it may end up being that that is also a learned behavior, that it becomes something that their expectation is that they're sick or sicker.